Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Struggle is a part of life. We know that. We know that very well, right? Sometimes my struggles occur at about 2 in the morning when I wake up and there are all the worries, there are all the fears, and all my insecurities, they're just racing around my head and I have to think, well, what, did, what, ha it, what, what happens if something goes wrong? Or sometimes regrets from the past kind of pour in. I call it the demon hour, two in the morning. And, and uh, when I said this to the first service, I, I saw a lot of, a lot of heads nod. Uh, so I'm not alone. Sometimes I think I should just hold a Bible study at two in the morning because a lot of folks are up doing the same thing that I am. Because you think that when you go to bed, you've got a, all the day put behind you. No, they're just waiting for you to wake up. And it feels like, you, you know, it feels like I don't have any defense against it. You know, during the day, you know, you've got whatever rationalizations you've got going to combat all of those fears. But boy, two in the morning, there's no defense. And so sometimes uh, uh, they keep me awake for quite a long time. But I found, I have found, that when I when I try to when I turn all of these fears over through through prayer, uh, I I do find some peace so that when I wake up in the morning, it's not as bad as I thought it was at two. And and even in one of the Psalms it says that uh, you know tears in the night will 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 go away to the joy that you find in the morning. I think it's because there's so much that I, I think that I can control during the day. I can control the situation. I should be able to control your behavior to the way I want you to behave. I can control my family. I can control the parishioners. Good luck with that one. I can control all sorts of things so, to, so, that, I can, so, that, it, so that I can get the outcome that I want. Control, control, control. And that's what I struggle with. Uh, but sometimes, you know, those regrets, they come back. Like, like you, know, uh, you know how those in the cartoons you had the, the good angel and the bad angel, and they just sit and fight all the time, and sometimes the bad angel wins, and, and, uh, but that little good angel keeps poking at you, just keeps that conscience, just keeps poking at you. And you just, I dismiss it, we dismiss it, yeah, 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 yeah. But it always comes back. And, and, uh, and it comes back usually because of something, maybe a conflict that happened quite some time ago uh, that just won't resolve itself. You know, in my life, in my personal life, there's, I've had this little bit of a conflict with, uh, my my dad's wife. Uh, my mom passed away about 25 years ago or so, and she and he remarried. And there was initially there was some friction, you know. And so, and of course, it was all her fault. All her fault. That's why I haven't needed to do anything, you know. But but the separation. The the my solution was just to distance myself, not engage with with with. Uh, her family, with my dad and, and, and her and her family. Well, guess who? Guess who's hurting because of it? My dad, right? It, it, because he's he's he loves us both, and yet you know I've got my pride. I I've got my pride, and and but I find that you know listing all of the things of her faults gets boring to, to the listener. Well, yeah, you know what happened 20 years ago? Well, and 15 years ago, well. And he goes, yeah, get over it, you know. How, but the thing, the, here's the question. How do you get over it? How do you get over it? Can you get over it? I think the, that this lesson that Jacob is wrestling with this man at night, he's wrestling because he's been estranged from his brother for years. 
He cheated his brother out of his inheritance and had to leave. He had to get out of town and, to, and, and start a new life way back where I was somewhere far away. Well, it was his time to come home again. There was some t- he had to come home. And he was going to make amends with his brother. But at first he had to wrestle. And at the end of the evening, at, at the break of dawn, they let go. They let go. And that's where the blessings come. Repentance? I was wrong. I have to admit what I'm wrong. Doesn't happen often, but it does. I think you're like me. And it takes guts. It takes courage to do this because it's not easy to be vulnerable, to say, I'm sorry. And then to find some reconciliation. It's not going to, the relationship isn't going to be, oh, wonderful, you know, great. But it, but it will have a chance to grow, to heal, and for the family to heal too. You know, Jesus in this gospel lesson is talking about the hard judge who had no fear of God and no compassion for human beings, and this woman keeps pestering him. Yeah, I recognize myself in that parable, but I'm the hard judge. My conscience is that woman is always, is always after me, and finally you just give in. So you got to give in. You don't have to. But, boy, the blessings that happen, and this has happened to me a few times in my ministry, where reconciliation does occur, where there is a, there is a mutual I'm sorry, let's move forward. Oh, I tell you, that's the best feeling, right? That is the best feeling. And that's the blessing that God promises us. I'm going to have to uh, preach a lot longer because the baby just went out, and... Uh, <laughs> So, so yeah, to, so it's, it's, it's about letting go, letting go. Stop trying to control things all the time. Let go. After the struggle, let go. Let God enter in and bless you and bless, and bless your family, bless your friends, bless the people who you may even be in conflict with. So, amen. So I'm going to tell you a really short story about when... I, can you guys hear me back there? So this is when my, my daughter, Madeline, was, was Max's age, and we were going to baptize Madeline, and she was screaming through the whole... And so Cindy took her out, my wife took her out, and... And Cindy was wearing a black Angora sweater, and she was like this, and it was time for baptism. I said, Cindy, come on, bring in the baby. So she brought in, she brought in Madeline, and, she, and at the baptismal font, she, she goes and presents Madeline. And Madeline's got black wool all over her face. She was like a wolf baby. And so I was kind of like doing this to get the, the, the wool off, and people in the congregation were going, what is he doing, you know? This is kind of a weird baptism, you know? Uh, so I just kind of dunked her a little bit. I'm, I'm just kidding. All that. 